my knowledge of science grew 25 years ago in basically a flash I came to the conclusion that the universe is so perfectly made and everything so perfectly matches together that there must be God and only one God and only one God. So I accepted there is God, but I was not looking for a religion. I thought all religions are wrong. Christians say this is one. The Jews said Jews are chosen people and if you're not Jew you're not not, not chosen. And about Islam I only had negative information. Negative information. So how does one distinguish with all the different ways of life, calling to, uh, to people, telling them that they're the only way? How do we distinguish what's the right way with all this confusion? First of all, let's get this straight. It has to be really easy to tell if Islam is a true religion or a fake religion. And it has to be real easy to see which religion on earth is the one from Allah and which is the one from men, from devils, from con men, what have you. It can't be that the one true religion from Allah that's generally from God is going to look exactly and not discernible from the one that's from devils, one that's written by men or made up by men or altered by men. And I can't tell which is the one authored by Allah and which is the one authored by people. It can't be. It can't then be. he finished the sentence. He said, I'll go to your faith. It's better than my faith, but you'll need proof. And I said, man, religion has never been about no. proof. It's about faith. That's it. That's what religion is. He said, in Islam, we have both. We have proof and faith. We have both. We have proof and faith. We have both. We have proof and faith. So different people from different religions used to knock on my door. And once the discussions got down to evidence, they had no answers. And that wasn't going to fly with me. And then I discovered Islam. And shortly after, I became Muslim. 1,400 years ago, when the world was immersed in darkness, the Quran was revealed, which brought light to a beleaguered world. And whereas the earlier books came with many scientific mistakes due to the hand of man having delved into them, the Quran had none of these contradictions. The world thought there could be no reconciliation between religion and science. But the Quran mentioned many scientific facts in great detail, like how a human being developed in the mother's womb. As a medical doctor, particularly attracted to natural sciences and physiology. I must confess that in 1972, when I read the Quran in the original text for the first time, these data concerning man were those which impressed me most. Mohammed could not have known these facts about human development in the seventh century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one no one who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. And described other scientific facts which amaze the world's renowned scientists. Actually, I'm very much impressed by finding true astronomical facts in Quran. I don't, I personally can't see how this could be a mere chance. There are too many accuracies. And like Dr. Moore, I have no difficulty in my mind reconciling that this is a divine inspiration or revelation um, which led him to these statements. Let me go straight to the second argument, which is about the miraculous nature of the Quran. The Quran being a signpost to the transcendent. What I mean by this is that the Quran can only be best explained by the fact that it is a divine book. And I'm going to use the inimitability of the Quran for this. Now, what do I mean by inimitability? What I mean by inimitability is that the Quran cannot be emulated, reproduced, matched, or copied with regards to its literary and linguistic features. But since Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last messenger that was sent to mankind, isn't it fair that his message, his the miracle that came with him and his message be preserved till the end of time so that humans can still make that judgment call whether this miracle and message is in fact man-made or divine, man-made or divine, man-made or divine. And then when I was maybe about one-third in Quran, I remember telling my wife, you know, this Muhammad, 
he must have been a very smart, very intelligent man because this book is very clear, very logical, very easy to follow and there are no contradictions, no contradictions. But then as I read later, I suddenly saw a scientific fact which I knew was only discovered in the 20th century. So immediately I saw that Muhammad is not the author of the Quran. Muhammad. That Muhammad is a messenger sent by God to give the Quran to mankind. Muhammad is a messenger sent by God to give the Quran to mankind. Allah, 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 Allah,